Hey, today we're going to be looking at the major scale. This is our first installment in the modal series. Uh, this is probably the easiest way you'll ever run across to learn the major scale over the entire fretboard. It's so simple you only need to learn two shapes of two notes. Before we get started though, let's talk about the interval structure of the major scale, or as it's referred to, the Ionian mode. This scale has a root, a major second, a major third, a perfect fourth, a perfect fifth, a major sixth, and a major seventh. Or that means a starting note, a note that's two half steps above that starting note, four half steps above that starting note, five half steps above the starting note, seven half steps above the starting note, nine half steps above the starting note, and finally eleven half steps above the starting note. If we were to chart this out starting the eighth fret on the low E, we'd have the following interval structure consisting of these notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. The cool thing about being familiar with intervals is that this information applies to any key. Well, our notes for this particular example, the C major scale, are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. If we went to a D major scale, you'll notice the notes will change, but the interval structure will remain the same. The interval structure for the major scale or Ionian mode will always be root, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, and major seventh, regardless of the key. This chart is for the C major scale or C Ionian mode as it appears over the entire fretboard. It's possible to learn this entire chart by learning only two two note shapes. Here's the first shape. This shape is an interval of a perfect fourth and in this case would be the notes C and F. If you're not familiar with intervals already I can't really stress how important it is that you, uh, that you do so. There's a bunch of free information on interval distances and uh, charts and all sorts of other stuff available at Chops from Hell at the website. For now though, uh, it's really just important that you know that this interval distance consists of five half steps. So at any rate, this is our first shape. And here's our second shape. This interval is an interval of either an augmented fourth or a diminished fifth. It can be referred to as either one. Uh, it's an interval of six half steps. Of course, this chart doesn't refer to the interval structure of the major scale or Ionian mode because we're obviously on the uh, fourth of the scale to the seventh of the scale. I just wanted to point out that the uh, interval distance is that of an augmented fourth or diminished fifth being six half steps. In this case, being the notes F and B. And once again, this is our second shape. Believe it or not, that's all you need to know to learn the entire fretboard for the major scale or Ionian mode. Now you might be asking yourself, how is it possible to learn the entire fretboard by only using two shapes? Well, let's take a look at the chart again uh, for the interval structure. And this time, let's extend it to E. Now the whole trick to this method of learning the whole fretboard by only using two shapes of two notes is to leapfrog intervals. There's an interval of a perfect fourth between every skip with the exception of the four to the seven, which is our augmented fourth or diminished fifth interval of six half steps. The root to the perfect fourth is obviously a perfect fourth. The major second to the perfect fifth is another perfect fourth. The major third to the major sixth of the scale is a perfect fourth. The perfect fourth to the major seventh is our augmented fourth or diminished fifth. The perfect fifth to the root is a perfect fourth. The major sixth to the major second is a perfect fourth. The major seventh to the major third is also a perfect fourth. So you can see that every one of the jumps is an interval of a perfect fourth being five half steps with the exception of the fourth to the seventh, in this case F to B, being six half steps, which is our augmented fourth or diminished fifth shape. Now if you're a little confused by this, let's just look at the fretboard. We're going to do this on every set of two strings, starting with the low E and the A. The shape from the root of the scale to the perfect fourth of the scale is obviously a perfect fourth. Note C to F. The shape from the major second to the perfect fifth of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes D to G. The shape from the major third to the major sixth of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes E to A. The shape from the perfect fourth of the scale to the major seventh of the scale is our only augmented fourth or diminished fifth shape. Notes F to B. The shape from the perfect fifth to the root of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes G to C. The shape from the major sixth of the scale to the major second of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes A to D. And finally, the shape from the major seventh to the major third of the scale is another perfect fourth. B to E. 
we were to continue this information up and down the entire fretboard on just the low E and A strings, you could see that all of this is accomplished by only using two shapes, either a perfect fourth or an augmented fourth. Here's the same information using the note names. Now let's go to the octave C at the 10th fret on the D string and look at the same information as found on the D and G string. The shape from the root of the scale to the perfect fourth of the scale is obviously a perfect fourth. Note C to F. The shape from the major second to the perfect fifth of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes D to G. The shape from the major third to the major sixth of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes E to A. The shape from the perfect fourth of the scale to the major seventh of the scale is our only augmented fourth or diminished fifth shape. Notes F to B. The shape from the perfect fifth to the root of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes G to C. The shape from the major sixth of the scale to the major second of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes A to D. And finally, the shape from the major seventh to the major third of the scale is another perfect fourth, B to E. Here's the scale degree information extended up and down the entire fretboard for the D and G strings. And here's the same information displayed as note names. So again, you can see this is exactly the same thing that we did on the low E and A strings. You've learned everything using just either a perfect fourth interval shape or an augmented fourth interval shape. Finally, let's do the same thing for the B and high E strings. Let's find the octave C, 13th fret B string to start on. The shape from the root of the scale to the perfect fourth of the scale is obviously a perfect fourth. Note C to F. The shape from the major second to the perfect fifth of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes D to G. The shape from the major third to the major sixth of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes E to A. The shape from the perfect fourth of the scale to the major seventh of the scale is our only augmented fourth or diminished fifth shape. Notes F to B. The shape from the perfect fifth to the root of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes G to C. The shape from the major sixth of the scale to the major second of the scale is another perfect fourth. Notes A to D. And finally, the shape from the major seventh to the major third of the scale is another perfect fourth. B to E. Go ahead and use this information to cover the entire fretboard for the B and high E strings. Once again, you see that we've learned everything here by only using two shapes, either the perfect fourth shape or the augmented fourth shape. And here's the same information displayed as note names. Now we combine the information that we learned in the low E and A strings, the D and G strings, and the B and high E strings, you would have actually learned the entire fretboard for the major scalar Ionian mode by learning only two two-note shapes, either the perfect fourth shape or the augmented fourth shape. It really doesn't get much easier than that. Now that we've laid things out vertically up and down the strings, let's see how this information works moving horizontally across the strings. Quick thing I want to point out is the use of octaves in these shapes. You'll notice that the uh, octave from the low E to the D string comes from an E chord, and the octave from the D string to the B string comes from a D chord. If that makes sense, great. If not, go back and check out those two chords. You'll see what I mean. Anyway, let's take a look at these shapes in octaves. Here's the perfect fourth shape between the root and the perfect fourth of the scale. <laughs> Another perfect fourth shape between the major second and perfect fifth of the scale. Another perfect fourth between the major third and major sixth of the scale. The only augmented fourth shape between the fourth and the major seventh of the scale. Another perfect fourth between the perfect fifth and the root of the scale. Another 
Another perfect fourth between the major sixth and the major second of the scale. And finally, another perfect fourth between the major seventh and the major third of the scale. So you want to be able to visualize these shapes uh, not only vertically up and down a set of strings, but also horizontally going across the string. All right, to conclude things, we're going to use these two two-note shapes to construct a standard three upper string patterns for the major scale or the Ionian mode. Most of you may be familiar with these patterns already. Uh, if you are, look at them in this way might uh, shed new light on things. And if you're not already familiar with these patterns, this will probably definitely be the easiest way you'll run across to learn them. There's three upper string pattern one starting the root of the scale. In this case, it's C, eighth fret, low E. This pattern consists entirely of perfect fourth shapes. Here's the complete pattern displayed with scale degrees and displayed as note names. Here's three upper string pattern two starting on the second of the scale. This pattern consists of a perfect fourth, another perfect fourth, here's our augmented fourth, and the rest is all perfect fourth shapes. Displayed as scale structure, and as note information. Something uh, really cool about learning the three upper string major scale patterns this way is that once you know one pattern completely, when you go to the next pattern, you actually already know two thirds of that second pattern. You only have to plug in just the uh, two two note shapes on the bottom two strings, the middle two strings, and the top two strings. So essentially, you're only having to learn one new strip of notes. For instance, if we look at the first three upper string pattern that we learned, and then take a look at the second three upper string pattern that we just learned, you can see that these two patterns share two thirds of their material. So essentially, once you've learned one three upper string pattern, when you move on to the next one, all you have to learn is just one strip of six notes, or three two note shapes, moving on the E and A, D and G, and B and high E strings. All right, now on to three upper string pattern number three, starting on the third of the scale, in this case E, 12th fret. We start with the perfect fourth shape, augmented fourth shape, perfect fourth shape, perfect fourth shape, another perfect fourth shape, augmented fourth shape, and the rest are all perfect fourth shapes. Here's the scale degree information and the note names. <laughs> And in terms of going from the second pattern to the third pattern, this is the only new information that you had to learn. Three upper string pattern four, starting on the fourth of the scale, F on the 13th fret. We'll start with an augmented fourth shape, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, augmented fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, and finally another augmented fourth. Here's the interval structure information and the note information. And going from pattern three to pattern four, this is all you needed to learn. Three upper string pattern five, starting on the fifth of the scale, in this case G, 15th fret. Perfect fourth shape, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, augmented fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, augmented fourth, and perfect fourth. Here's the interval structure, the notes, and going from pattern four to pattern five, this is all you needed to learn. On to three upper string pattern six. This starts on the sixth of the scale, in this case A, 17th fret. This entire pattern consists of perfect fourth shapes with the exception of this augmented fourth shape. Here's the interval structure information, the notes, and going from pattern five to pattern six, this is all you needed to learn. Finally, for our last three upper string pattern, pattern number seven, starting on the seventh of the scale, in this case B, 19th fret, 
This entire pattern is perfect fourth shapes. Here's the scale degree information, the notes, and going from pattern 6 to pattern 7, this is all you needed to learn. Now if you don't have a guitar with 24 frets, don't sweat it, because obviously these patterns further up in the neck can be found 12 frets lower on the fretboard as well. For instance, in the key of C, pattern 7 can also be found at the 7th fret. Pattern 6, originally found at the 17th fret, can be found at the 5th fret. Pattern 5 at the 15th fret, can be found at the 3rd fret. Pattern 4 at the 13th fret, 1st fret. And pattern 3 at the 12th fret, can also be found in the open position. So we've managed to learn the entire fretboard for the major scale or Ionian mode by only using two shapes of two notes, either the perfect fourth shape or the augmented fourth shape. And you've probably noticed that the augmented fourth shape only takes place between the perfect fourth of the scale and the major seventh of the scale. Every other shape on the entire fretboard is that of a perfect fourth. Once again, here's the entire fretboard for the C major scale or Ionian mode displayed as scale degree information and also as the note names. Keep in mind that while we've used the key of C major for this entire discussion, the interval information we've discussed applies to any key. For instance, if you want to switch to an A major scale, you just simply move everything down three frets, making sure that all the ones, or the root of the scale, are all on A notes. Like this. Well, that's it for major scale modal module one. While you may not be aware of it, we've actually laid the groundwork for you to understand all the other modes of the major scale, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. By comprehending the entire fretboard for the major scale, you already know everything you need to know to understand modes. It's just going to be a matter of looking at the material from a different perspective. But that information, along with much more, such as going well beyond just three upper string patterns for scales, is subject matter for future installments. So I hope you found this useful. Check out the site for upcoming releases, and I'll catch you later.